What's up, gearheads? Toby with GearReport.com. We're out here at Mining Ridge Armory again today, bringing you a review of the Boyd's Spike Camp Custom Stock. Boyd sent us one of their new Spike Camp stocks to take a look at and review. Um, I say new because it's actually been out for a minute. Um, but they wanted us to test it out and see what we thought about it. So for my particular rifle, I had the Savage Mark II FVSR with the bullpup style barrel. So that was the one that I got them to send for me. And as you can see, I got it in the pepper stock color configuration. Overall, Boyd's boasts having about eight different stock styles, eight to 10, something like that. Um, 17 to 20 different wood configurations or color configurations, as well as the ability to um, choose matte finish versus laminate finish, laser engraving, uh, spacers for your for your butt stock, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. And they have that available for literally hundreds of different you know historical rifles and rifles that are still in the market today, um, including AR platform rifles and some fun, some really fun guns. So. I would venture to say, I don't know the exact numbers, but I would roughly guess that based on the way that Boyd's has their business set up, they could configure theoretically thousands of different types of configurations for your particular rifle. But again, as I mentioned, in our particular case, we, we were trying to, uh, we were reviewing the, the uh, Spike Camp for my Savage Mark II. The Spike Camp was kind of a deviation from, from uh, Boyd's previous model. Uh, previous business model in years past. What they decided to do was bring kind of the, a, a lower end price point, not lower end quality, but lower end price point for the stock by bringing in something that was shy of $100 so that you could break into the market and get an aftermarket stock for your rifle that was you know, an upgrade from the, your typical factory model. For me, upgrade on the stock from the factory stock is definitely an understatement. So the stock that the Savage Mark II FVSR came with is this molded resin stock, no, you know, just a rough, scratchy surface on the back, hard plastic, in, uh, single piece molded trigger guard, which comes into play in just a minute. We're going to talk about that when we come to the pros and cons. That actually weighed in significantly. Um, you know, and just, just overall, don't get me wrong, it was a very, very solid stock that came from the factory, but that's the point. It was just a solid rock, you know, just solid thud stock. Meanwhile, that Savage Mark II is singularly one of the most accurate 22s I have ever laid my hands on. Um, it, it's, it's an amazing rifle, and, I, and so when, when Boyd's offered the opportunity for me to review one of their stocks, this is the one I chose instead of one of my higher end rifles because I wanted to upgrade it and give it, give it some love. So before we jump into any of the pros and cons, let's talk about form, fitment, and function of the Boyd stock for the, the Savage Mark II that I've got it on. And now again, I want to be clear that everything I'm talking about is going to, your mileage may vary a bit on your particular rifle, but overall, the overarching concepts that I, I'm going to be focusing on for this review will apply across the board to just about any of, of the Boyd Spike Camp um, stocks. So for starters, you'll notice the, the ample rubber recoil pad that you can see that I can depress. Hopefully that's picking up on the camera, but I can actually depress and push in with my finger. Now, in the case of this 22 long rifle, you know, that's just a nice to have. That, that doesn't help in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But for a larger caliber rifle, obviously the, that addition on the back that Boyd's does literally right out of the box will help for that recoil reduction and increase accuracy for follow-up shots. The amazing cut that they've got, this indented cut here, and the way that the grip is form cut and form fitted, to make it ambidextrous, working my way up from the rear of the stock to the front, that is, is just awesome. That ambidextrous fit, an ambidextrous stock grip is amazing. So kudos to them and good job on that. That is awesome. The thumb hole design puts your, your, your hand at just the perfect natural angle too. So I'm not having to camp forward like you do on, on you know, in front of the comb of some rifles. 
in front of the cone with some raffles. I'm not having to tilt you know, straight up like you do for a you know, 1911 style grip. It's a really good natural grip. It just comes in naturally right at the angle of my arm. And that's both left and right handed. Now again, your mileage may vary. Your wrist may break a little more, but mine doesn't. Which gives it that solid straight platform straight into for recoil reduction and straight into the body according to what grip you're using. So again, working forward just a little bit. Let's talk about the underside. Uh, and form and fitment here. So I'm gonna go into this a little bit on pros and cons, uh, a little more in just a minute, but you'll notice very, you'll notice obviously that I have a, an aftermarket trigger guard and an aftermarket plate. Now I'm mentioning that aftermarket plate and aftermarket trigger guard for a couple reasons. Not because per se the Boyd's stock uh, as a pro or a con, but just for awareness for you. So in my case, for the Savage, as I mentioned, the trigger guard was a one piece, which means that when I received the Boyd Spike Camp Superior stock, it, it didn't have a trigger guard. So when I first installed it, and I didn't realize this ahead of time. I did not realize before I ordered the stock that this was gonna be the case, otherwise I had would have had the parts in hand. But when I installed it, there was no trigger guard, and the, the magazine feed ramp metal plate that protects the bottom had a curvature as maybe you can see on camera, there's a, a curvature in the stock that the FVSR came with, the Savage Mark II. And so it stood up off of the, and rounded out above the Spike Camp stock. Now I'm mentioning that for a couple of reasons. Number one is so I had to order from a company called Diversified Innovative Products, DIP Incorporated. I ordered an aftermarket, excuse me, an aftermarket trigger guard and an aftermarket plate, as well as a compensator, just for, for fun and giggles. Because um, gosh knows, 22 Lone Rifles recoils like a, a beast. But at any rate, I mention it for the reason that do your homework. Your mileage is definitely going to vary when it comes to the fitment of your rifle uh, in the Boyd Spike Camp stock. But in my case, I didn't think it through ahead of time. I didn't look at my stock. I made a horrible mistake and then had to wait another week or two after I figured out, I had to research and find the parts I needed, see if they even existed, was kind of panicking a little bit. And I settled on this because they, they seem to have a very superior product. It's got the larger uh, trigger guard opening, a good flat plate, uh, and a nice compensator that, that blends right into the barrel. Point being though is, you need to do your research ahead of time before you order your stock to make sure that you're getting all the parts that you're gonna need for your particular build ahead of time. All right, so we've worked from the back, working towards the front, talking about form and function. Uh, clearly, it's got a, a very good form, a very good function. It's very aesthetically pleasing. If you don't like the color, they've got a bunch to pick from. So let's talk about fitment. So in my case, and again, your, your mileage is gonna vary, but in my case, the drop, it quickly, easily, and perfectly dropped in as far as the receiver and the barrel, and it gave it that standard free float that everybody's used to. About the only connections points for it are, you know, a couple out here, and then some, some down here where, uh, back here where it bolts into the, to the frame itself. So it gives it a good free float ability so that the, the, the barrel has its harmonics and it's able to get, you know, your, your maximum for accuracy. That said though, from a fitment perspective, when you look inside of here, inside of the, the two cutout areas for the trigger guard and for that magazine well, you can see that there's a little bit of a bulge there where the plate comes up above and doesn't recess down in completely. Same thing with this trigger guard here. Now, to be fair, I'm using, again, a DIP incorporated aftermarket trigger guard and an aftermarket plate, so I don't know how a true Savage, say standard Woodstock, would fit in here. But that being said, regardless, you are likely going to have to do just a little bit of sanding, a little bit of uh, love and attention in those exposed areas that are rough and, and slightly gnarled for fitment of your individual um, rifle's parts. Um, the guys at Boyd's, whenever they sent me this stock, side note to this, and I don't know if this would stand for you or for everybody or, or how their customer service is, so reach out to them and ask but they offered that if the fitment was off, even just a little bit, to contact them and they would make it right. Um, but, you know, I didn't need to. I just grabbed the old sandpaper and shoved it down in there and just kept going with it. Um, so from a fitment perspective, you know, again, 
your mileage is going to vary. You're taking an aftermarket stock and you're adapting it to your rifle, allowing for the, the variances in machining directly from the company that made your rifle, allowing for variances of a, a stock that is handmade by Boyd's when you order it. These aren't prefabs sitting on a shelf somewhere waiting for you to order them. You order it to your specifications and they make it right then and there. So you've got those variances in, variances in manufacturing uh, and creation as well that you're going to have to contend with. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about some pros and cons for this thing. Obviously the pros are um, it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. I mean, this particular one is the pepper. I wanted it to be very low profile and very mute. Uh, I got the more of the matte finish. Um, but if you look at their website, my God, they have some absolute beautiful pieces of wood. So, you know, you can't say enough positive about that. Another couple of pros is, as we talked about, the ambidextrous and er ergonomics, the ambidextrous ability of the stock and the ergonomics of the rifle. It just fits. And in my case, for me and my body, this is absolute perfection. Now, again, your mileage is going to vary. If you had longer arms to where this fell further up your arm from your elbow would mean you'd have to pull in your elbow tighter to your body when you're shouldering the rifle and so on. But in my case, this is absolute perfection. So the ergonomics of this thing is amazing. Fitment, like we talked about, it's going to take a bit of machining, but I'm still impressed with the fact that overall everything dropped in and worked just right out of the gates, right out of the box. I didn't have to do anything special or any kind of special machining or send it back or contact them or anything like that. Another couple of nice little side points is these sling swivels right here and right here on it right out of the box. Didn't have to touch anything, didn't have to do anything. They were already on there and ready to rock and roll as soon as I mounted the, the rifle into it. Another pro, as we mentioned, is that buttstock pad. Very nice touch. And the most important pro of them all is the price point. So with the Spike Camp, compared to some of the Boyd's other products, you're, you're able to get in under a hundred bucks, not counting tax and shipping and handling, don't get me wrong, to get your rifle upgraded from fair to middling to top notch and amazing, beautiful, even a work of art. So you cannot go wrong in that price range uh, compared to a lot of your polymer stocks and aftermarket just junk you're gonna get. Man, that's just awesome and beautiful. So, pros, awesome. So from a cons perspective, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna to have to nitpick on the cons. Um, I, I, I just don't have any. That's the harsh reality of it, I don't have any. No cons to speak of. So I'm gonna nitpick and I'm gonna say, and this is literally just me pointy elbow in it, uh, that you're gonna to have to do your fitment. The fitment's gonna be the only con I can talk about for this, is that you're, you, as a responsible gun owner and as a, a responsible shooter are going to have to do the necessary research and the necessary, you know, uh, hillbilly engineering to get, you know, some of the sanding done or some of the fitment just right, you know, the torque down, you know, for example, making sure you don't torque down the screws too tight for, for screws that are not Allen wrenches that lock into metal, but screws that go directly into the wood body of it so that you're not stripping out or damaging the wood for future, for future use, um, those kinds of things. It is not your, your average Joe user's stock. So from a con perspective, there is gonna be that fitment concern, that research and homework that you're gonna to have to do. There's gonna be um, you doing your due diligence. And that is really stretching it for a con. Overall, I got nothing negative to say about this thing. It is just beautiful and it has been a joy to shoot. So bottom line, as always, would I spend my money on it? Would I trust my life to it? Would I spend my money on it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another thing I didn't mention is the weight of it overall uh, compared to some of the other modular stocks that I have purchased in the past. But this thing is very lightweight. It is very price point friendly compared to some of the other options out there on the market. It is an awesome, awesome upgrade to almost any rifle, including even AR platform rifles that you could do. So would I spend my money on it? In a flat heartbeat and a flat minute, if I had a rifle that was base stock low level from the factory and I wanted to upgrade it to that next level or even just make it beautiful and make it more like an heirloom rifle for something that has a, a history to it for the next generation, would I trust my life to it? 
Absolutely. Uh, obviously, you're not talking about the firearm itself. You're talking about an accoutrement for the firearm itself. Any firearm that I would put this stock on that I would use as a you know, Red Dawn rifle or a Go to War rifle or one that I was using to hunt and harvest food so that my family could survive, whatever I was using the rifle for, would I trust this stock to function the way it's supposed to function and get to work in such a way that would re retain or maintain my life? Absolutely. So I would trust my life to a stock like this. It's literally a solid piece of wood. Short of you burning the thing or just warping it from the rain or just absolutely smashing and crashing it, I'm not really sure how you can get the thing to fail any more than you get any other wood stock to fail. So yes, I would definitely trust my life to it and I would spend my money on it. So hopefully a bunch of this information has been useful to some of you out of there, out there who are contemplating purchasing the Boyd's Spike Camp stock for your rifle in your particular configuration and to your liking. All I can say is you can't go wrong underneath a hundred bucks. I don't know that you can find anything out there that's going to top them that's going to be any better in this particular category. Go out and buy it. So until we see you out on the range, you keep living your dream. Thank you.